all right how's it going everyone i hope you guys can hear me properly perfect welcome how's it going hope everyone's having a great day today it is pretty sunny where i am um it's very nice i like it even though i can't go outside at least i get some sunshine coming through it's kind of hot in my room right now um but it's cold outside which is nice but I'm getting a little sweaty but all right enough about me hope you guys are doing well my name is pavlo I'm here with Logitech talking to you today about the G502 uh, gaming mouse that we have and how it doesn't have to be just a gaming mouse. Um, it can be focused on other things and help you with your every day-to-day -day lives and make it become a really productive or productivity workhorse um, and a customization workhorse that I call it because it has so many buttons to choose from 11, I believe, to customize and to use. And it's not just, like I said, for gaming. It can be for uh, Adobe Premiere, which I use and I'm going to show today. It could be for Microsoft. Word, it could be just for Chrome tabs, it could be for whatever you want. You can customize it with our uh, G Hub software, it's really, uh, really cool. So, uh, let's uh, jump into this because I only want to keep it short and brief. Uh, all right, so let's do the overlay. All right, so uh, I want to show you guys that some of the hotkeys that I can do later on, the macros, I'm not going to be using my hands for any of them. Um, so, I just have a little camera down here, and then I have my desktop screen with G Hub. So G Hub is Logitech G um, has its own program called G Hub, and as you can see, all the gaming products are under here. So I have the G502 that we'll be talking about today, the Power Play Mat, um, the G915, uh, and the G560. So you can go in and customize all the stuff. You've also got active profiles up there. What that is is basically um, you can create different profiles for different programs, uh, and it'll change the way the keyboard works. It'll change the way the mouse works uh, in terms of what the buttons do. So for example, the G915. We have G keys that you can customize, and same on the G502, you have custom buttons. So you got the active profile up there. If you click that, you can see all the games up there. So Fortnite, Call of Duty, these are the ones that it scanned automatically and imported some custom keys, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you can even add uh, like programs like Adobe. Uh, Premiere, so you can customize those, and uh, every time Adobe Premiere opens or Call of Duty or whatever, it'll switch over your button layouts on the keyboard or on the mouse to whatever you set it up. So you know, Spacebar doesn't really do sp what Spacebar does; it does something else that you've assigned to. And within those profiles, you can have extra. Within those programs, you can have different profiles. So you can have like uh, default and whatever, and you can customize it to. Let's say you're playing more of a support role or uh, an attack role, you can change it to different profiles and switch it within game. So at the top there, it's going to be good to know whether um, you, which profile you're in, because like I said, it's a smart program. And it'll, as soon as you're in Adobe, it'll start customizing and switching up everything uh, for Adobe. And then when you're back on your default or when you're on um, like a whatever, um, your desktop mode, it'll switch to that. So as you can see, it default desktop is now active. So it switched instantaneously. If I open Adobe go back to G Hub, it's a switch to Adobe. So pretty cool. Uh, so let's dive into this. Now for the G502, you've got your mouse and you've got three uh, tabs on the side. So Light Sync customizes your colors. Uh, you can go through cycling that, whether it's a screen sampling, breathing cycle, so on and so forth. Uh, you can do the primary button or the or primary lights or the logo. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Light syncing is pretty cool. Then you've got your button assignments. So your layout, so it's pretty cool. We'll get dive into this um, heavily throughout this uh, and how you can customize it and then the last one is your sensitivity so you can set the sensitivity to um, to whatever you want and then you can have a DPI shift uh, speed which is pretty cool so you can assign a button to uh, switch to whatever DPI you've set as you press and hold it so if you're playing a game and you're sniping for example and you want the mouse to move a lot slower you can switch or faster if you want you can assign a button to when you press that button it switches the DPI instantaneously we won't really talk about this too much or the lights because like I said it's more about customization uh, and productivity. So let's dive in back into the assignments. We're in the Adobe uh, Premiere Pro default uh, profile, and I have it set up where my middle mouse button pauses and plays music. Um, the mouse wheel uh, actually switches uh, tracks. So as you can see on the mouse here, if I show you guys, it actually has a button that you can move the mouse left and right. So you can see the music is playing. Uh, I think I muted the desktop audio. Let me play that for you guys right there. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. So it's playing music instantaneously, and I'm just pressing it, pausing it. Oh, switch. I got to switch back to Adobe. Make sure you're on the right profile. You can pause and play. And then next track, backtrack. So pretty cool. Um, so 
I've cut, uh, set it up like this, but you can go throughout the mouse and switch over all these different profiles to whatever, you, uh, sorry, buttons. Uh, to whatever you'd like uh, specific to different profiles. So for example, like I said, I have previous track, next track, I've got battery level on this button and volume up and down on these side buttons. So um, the way to do this is that you can go on the side here with the assignments and look at the keys that you want. And if you want a button to be caps lock or control or delete, you can just click and drag uh, it over. And now all of a sudden this button here is delete. Every time I'm in Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, this will delete it. Uh, or delete whatever and if I want to do enter I can just click and drag and now it's assigned the G8 button to whatever I've assigned so that's pretty basic but it just does one button what if I want to do something more complex so you can have actions for different programs uh, so for example for discord I can have it where uh, every time I use this G8 button it's now muted discord uh, or mute myself, I should say, in Discord, so you guys can't hear me. Uh, you can add different app, uh, actions. The more powerful side, I would say, are the macros. So the macros are pretty cool. Actually, let's jump into system. System is a little bit more simple, and then we'll jump into macros. It's more complex, and I really want to show you this. I think it's kind of cool. So the system is stuff, uh, basic stuff like you know, uh, DPI shift, the battery level, um, you know, audio output cycle, cut, uh, sorry, pause, play, cut and paste, stuff like that. So for example, if I wanted to, like I uh, said, middle click on the button, I can just drag and drop. It's the same um, process, but it'll be more, a little bit more uh, fine-tuned to, like I said, editing, cut, um, cut, cut and paste, or the media keys, like volume up and down. Again, same thing as dragging. So it's, it's there already. It's kind of like uh, default um, for your system. Um, so now with macros, what's really cool is you can create different macros. So let's create a new macro. Uh, oh no, did I make a new macro? I already made a new macro here. Yeah, okay, no. So let's create a new macro. So create a new macro, let's call it test and Photoshop. So what's cool about the macros is that you can name the, the macro, so you always have it saved onto your software. And then you can choose whether it's a uh, no repeat. So as soon as you press it, it just activates and that's it. You can do it repeat while holding. So self-explanatory, press and hold, it'll keep Requ uh, repeating until while you're holding the button. A toggle is like a switch, like a light switch. So if you press it once, it just keeps doing this action or macro until you tell it to stop. And then the sequence is kind of a hybrid. It's a uh, press and hold. So you can press it to play it and then press and hold. It'll repeat it while you're holding it. So pretty self-explanatory. So let's choose no repeat because for our example, we're not going to need to. But if you ever want to switch the type, you can just go up here where it says the name of the macro. You can do macro type no repeat, uh, repeat while holding and just switch it between. So sequence, toggle, etc etc so um, let's start a new macro and I want to open Photoshop and I want to open a document right away it's pretty simple um, it's a pretty simple command or macro so I'll show you guys how to do that today with G hub so start now you can choose the recorded keystrokes the tech which is basically whatever you type into the keyboard uh, the text and emojis which is self-explanatory text if you want to repeat a text or an emoji you can press a button sign a button let's say it's the G1 on the uh, 915 or something on your mouse you can just assign it so every time you press or press and hold it'll just keep uh, typing that out action would be something like discord with the whole deafen and mute self um, and you, again you can make create a chain as I'll show you and then you can do launch application so you can launch like Photoshop for example which we'll use today um, and then also you can do a system stuff like I was saying pause music battery levels or whatever else is uh, is programmed onto your computer whatever is the system and then you can add delays if you want a certain delay so I want to open Photoshop Photoshop normally takes a few seconds to kind of boot up and get running as you'll see in the demo so I want to add a delay of maybe like 10 seconds so right now we're at 50 milliseconds which is way too short if I add a 1 and a 0 that's 100 milliseconds I need a thousand is one second yeah a thousand one second and then 10,000 milliseconds equals 10 seconds so 1,000 is a second so 10 seconds after launching Photoshop I want the computer to now uh, or the program I should say to hit control N which is the shortcut key for creating a new document within Photoshop so as you can see it picked up the 10 seconds and then it picked up sorry it picked up the uh, me pressing control down waiting a couple milliseconds hitting N again waiting milliseconds letting go of N and then letting go of control. I can press stop recording, otherwise I just type out a bunch of stuff and it would just keep going. I don't want that for this demo purpose. So now I've got my little macro, I can go in and use standard delays if I want a simplified delay uh, between them, but I don't because I need to give it some time to open up Photoshop and let it process. Uh, you can also actually go in and show the keystrokes if you want to simplify, if you're creating a big chain of macros. And like I said, you can just keep going. So let's do this. Um, 
let's reset and then I can just show you a keystroke you can just keep typing a bunch of codes so you kind of can become a coder in a sense that you can create all these complex commands if you choose to do so now we don't want this so let's reset we're gonna go back into launch program I already uh, selected Photoshop if you don't have it you can just create new and select a program uh, the exe file so I went down to Photoshop found the exe and opened it and it added it there so Photoshop like I said record keystroke oh no I have to add a delay my apologies we're gonna do 10,000 10 seconds perfect we're gonna go record the keystroke control N oh uh, stop recording did I do this wrong I think I did this wrong a little silly let's uh, shorten this up oh delay 10,000 cool record keystroke control N perfect that was that why is that that's weird Okay, I guess it's going to work. Hopefully it works. All right, so create the keystroke, hit save. Now you've created the uh, test Photoshop. Let's assign it to the battery life button. Actually, we're going to have to make sure we're on the default to make sure you're on the correct uh, program or profile, I should say. So we're going to take the test Photoshop, drag it onto this button there, and then I'm going to go back on the regular home screen, click here, press the button up here. Hands are off the mouse and keyboard. It's going to open up Photoshop. Give it a couple seconds, and then nothing. Strange. All right, let's try that again. I have to find a better macro if this isn't going to work for us. Maybe it's going to take longer than 10 seconds. There you go. So it opened up. Photoshop took a little bit longer than 10 seconds, but it opened up a new document um, just by pressing that button on the mouse there. If I close it and go, let's say I close Photoshop and go into regular uh, old fashioned, open up the Adobe Cloud, hit open Photoshop, let it run its magic, not doing anything again. It'll just stay stagnant. It won't open up a new document. Let it go. Nothing. You can see my face now and see everything that I'm working on. Perfect. All right. So example shown through the macros. You can assign those macros and now they're saved on there for test Photoshop. You can drag it and assign it to whatever button you want. So now more that's 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 macros and going into the complexities of that. But what it looks like when you're working, for example, with Premiere, Adobe Premiere is if, if you're editing and uh, scrubbing a timeline, you want to have your hands where they need to be. You don't want to have to go in and start moving your hands around. So, for example, if you're editing, my hand usually rests around the WASD because I'm a gamer. And I also know that my C tool for cutting and chopping up clips are that there. Um, right. And then I can do Control V, uh, Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. If I press V, it goes back to normal tools. So editors kind of get used to like where their keys are going to be, uh, where their hands are going to be, and they don't want to really move around. Uh, for example, I have the uh, DPI Shift button on the mouse there on the side, this button right here, to delete. Uh, so for example, if I have a clip here and I don't want it, I can just press with my thumb and it deletes the, the um, clip. And then if I want to undo that, I can just use the back and forth buttons that I've assigned to undo that. So pretty cool. I can now redo it, undo it, redo it, undo it. So um, you can assign these to whatever program, like I said, Microsoft Word or Chrome or whatever you want, whether it's a tab switch, you want to switch tabs while you're typing something out. Um, and you can do this with your keyboard as well. So it's not just uh, strictly stuck to the mouse. But when you are editing with your mouse, uh, you want to be able to play some music real quick uh, with the mouse wheel, pause it, play it again, skip the song, pause it. And again, my hands aren't moving. I'm not moving my mouse over either. I can just stay focused uh, while I'm doing like the scrubbing of the timeline or any type of editing. So G-Hub, very valuable tool. It allows you to do all these types of like strong macros and system editing for different profiles. And like I said, you could change it up for different profiles if you want to have like a specific Adobe uh, Premiere profile. So that wraps up the customization of the G502 and how it can be helping you save time and energy um, and make something really complex into a short little macro with a press of a button. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be here to answer them. I'll give you guys a few minutes to type some messages in the chat. Um, I see that you guys are all there. Greetings. Thank you for joining us, David and Chucky and LaShonda. Hello, world. What's going on, AV? 
You guys have any questions on the G-Hub software that I can answer qu real quick for you guys? I'm just going to have a sip of coffee while I wait. Like I said, you can go and create different profiles, um, different macros, different complexities. You can add uh, applications. It can launch stuff, cut and paste, um, open stuff, close stuff, move stuff around. Okay, I don't see any questions in the chat at the moment. So thank you guys for joining me today. Um, I'll see you guys in the next Cell Pro video uh, and the next training. Uh, thank you for joining me like I said already and have a wonderful day stay safe out there thank you James Oliver Holla all right guys take care thank you for joining me have a wonderful rest of your day stay safe out there it is sleek and intuitive AV G hub is really powerful if you get into the nitty-gritty of it um, and it's with all of our gaming software it doesn't have to be a gaming tool per se it could be also a productivity tool as well so the price of two two different uh products in the price for one product all right guys like i said i'm going to wrap it up thank you for joining me have a wonderful day stay safe out there and i'll see you guys in the next video intuitive av g hub is really powerful if you get into the nitty-gritty of it um, and it's with all of our gaming software. It doesn't have to be a gaming tool per se. It could be also a productivity tool as well. So the price of uh